Another thing that Spinishiwa does really well with this build is he exerts his map control. Uh, you can see all this creep gives him vision of it, basically his entire half of the map. Look at this, he has almost entirely 100% vision of everything that's going to be going on. But in addition, he's going to flank around, he's going to knock down rocks with his zerglings, and he likes to go for a little backstab baneling plays, whether it's with Nidus Worms or, um, you know, just, just banelings themselves. So we're going to see uh, what Spinishua opts to do. He is setting up a few banelings down here. So we'll see what he wants to do with those. From here on out, I mean, the, the build is pretty much ran, and the rest of it is reactionary stuff. His hive is going up. He is starting a spire. Um, again, he is taking a hatchery at the gold. So this is going to be kind of, uh, we're going to watch what Spinishiwa does, but I'm also going to kind of cast this game from an entertainment standpoint, just to show you guys how cool of a build this is and what it can set you up to do in the later game. Another option that we didn't mention is he will put down a roach warren if he feels the need to uh, get roaches out to deal with any sort of attacks. Meanwhile, there is a small drop here going on, and one thing it does mention in his official little build write-up is that you can get a spire and put out like six or so mutalisks, not over committing to mutalisks since he does want the tier three out, but the mutalisks will be to shut down any drop play, so he'll be able to shoot down these drop ships and uh, stop that once and for all if he can help it. So again, you can see this queen out here having fun, pooping out more creep tumors to get this creep spread as far as possible. Uh, we can actually see down here, there's some burled zerglings, um, and I would have to imagine that he's going to unburrow them at some time and make a mess in this Terran main. There are also a couple of burrowed banelings in here, so this could really cause a lot of trouble if KR doesn't catch it. And uh, we're going to see these banelings go off. Blam! It does weaken those SCVs, which is why you do want to get those plus uh, attack upgrades as soon as you can. Those do affect banelings attacks. And if you do get uh, the level 3 baneling attacks, it will one-shot SCVs, rather than just hurting them like we see there. We'll go ahead and keep going. Um, so ideally, Spanishua, like I said, he'll put out either Broodlords or Infestors. And uh, he will get the benefits of these upgrades on both of those. And it, uh, it essentially just comes down to him just getting good positioning on his opponent and he will pull stuff like queens and other supporting units to heal his broodlords or ultralisks or uh, fend off any other attacks. Again, he's bringing these zerglings around to help protect from these drops. Uh, so he is kind of being a little bit minimalist in that. And here up comes the Greater Spire. Uh, ah, we missed it. He did. You can see the remains of SCVs here, but he went ahead and rolled these banelings in and blew up this whole mineral line. So uh, this third is essentially doing nothing for him right now did get a little bit distracted by the drop. And again, there's more drops here going on, which, again, if you put out those mutalisks, it will kind of shut down any flying over avenues that those medevacs will have. Because if you pick off one or two medevacs, then they're going to be really discouraged from dropping for the rest of the game. I'm just going to go ahead and watch this engagement once again. Really good marine micro here out of KR once again. So this is, again, not a build that's, you know, to be played around with. This is a very serious build against very serious players. So, um... If it works for those kind of people, then it can also work for you. Spinishiwa's economy is really erupting here. His gas economy in particular, and the reason this works so well once he gets all of his bases up, is going to be off the charts. His gas in income is almost 1000 per minute, which is almost even hard to spend. I mean, he's banking 1200 but it could be just to spend on those Broodlords, which should be coming up here any minute now that the Greater Spire is done. Go ahead and switch back over to the production tab. Here come those Broodlords, three Broodlords on the way, and uh, up comes the Terran Advancement. So we're going to go ahead and kind of watch this uh, engagement here and see how Spanishiwa handles this, just to give you guys an idea of how to, to maneuver these Tier 3 units with their support. But uh, KR is discouraged from what he sees on his scan, so he's going to go ahead and back up. Uh, he, KR is going to try to catch up an economy. But again, KR has only been doing things like little drops here and there to kill some workers. If you take a look at the workers killed, 16 to 14, so those banelings essentially made up for any sort of drop play that KR was doing. Um, he is barfing up some creep over here at this, uh, what would be the fifth expansion of the Terran, just so to delay it a little bit. Here come the Broodlords, and you're going to see Spanishua bring his support. Your support here needs to be making sense in what you want to do. What he wants to do is he wants to siege these marines and these tanks. But the funny thing is is that with most Terran compositions, if they go for this marine tank, these little broodlings will come down and make the tank shoot their own units. So he'll lose a ton of marines because of those broodlords. 
His support is going to be, look at all these queens, he has five queens here, just to throw down transfuses on these broodlords and keep them at high health. And these are huge investments, especially in gas. So you don't want to be throwing them away if you can help it. And the way you can preserve it is just pull queens, have them heal them, and go to work. Uh, so we're going to see some other support coming up, like these Corruptors. Take out these Vikings. And I will go ahead and mention one quick thing, is that uh, Spanishiwa's scouting is still dead on. He knows exactly what uh, KR is doing. Uh, he does see one factory here, one factory here, and only one reactored starport. So he knew that going for these Broodlords was the right avenue because Corruptors versus Vikings is actually a fair fight. But he can produce so many Corruptors a lot faster than uh, KR can produce Vikings if KR is only on one starport. So we'll go ahead and continue on here. Again, you can see these Marines getting sieged by their own tanks. This one Broodling will cause it to hit a Marine and hit them really hard. And you can see those those... Uh, two marines got killed mostly by siege tank fire. Uh, broodlords are going to continue to siege here and Sunisha is not just going to throw the kitchen sink at him because he needs to keep these broodlords as much as possible. You can see transfuses going off on these two units. Uh, these corruptors are going to come in here, get a little bit overzealous and he's going to have to pull them back. But now he has all these broodlords in the sky uh, and he has, he's getting really good trades. He's killing all of uh, KR's anti-air for really cheap investments. He's lost probably two or three Broodlords, which, yeah, I mean, you might say, that doesn't sound very cheap. But at the same time, Spanishiwa's gas income is so insane, he can afford to put out five Corruptors at a time and keep morphing them into Broodlords as they come up. As you can see, one morphing here. There's more Corruptors rallying right now. Look at this Corruptor count. That's really high. Uh, if you're KR, you'd ideally want to throw down another Starport and get out Vikings as fast as you can, since that's your only way you're going to come back. And you can see more support going on. Here's the Infestors dropping Fungogross on top of these Marines. So these Marines will die very handily to not only Fungogross, but the Broodlords hitting them and their own Siege Tanks blowing them up. And now you can see Siege Tanks blowing up their own teammates. So uh, this, you, you're going to gradually see Spanishiwa continue to pull ahead in supplies. Spanishiwa is pretty much maxed, so, and he does have the minerals to go ahead and remax once he gets that far. So uh, eventually, KR is contained. Uh, he can't do anything unless he puts out the right counter to this, and he just doesn't have a lot of income. I mean, his natural is almost gone. His main is now out. His third is basically the only fully mining base. But uh, Spanishwa is just going to bleed him to death here and keep this pressure on until the game's over. And Spanishwa has, again, this hatch, which has actually lost all of its workers, this hatchery, which doesn't have a ton of workers, the gold, his natural still has some minerals, his main still has some minerals, so Spanishiwa is in a really great uh, position here. There's going to be a huge number of Broodlords on the field in just a second, considering he is uh, building up all this gas, and you can see he's even throwing down an Ultralisk Cavern behind this, just so he can switch into it if he really needs to, and just in case he may have warranted that uh, extra starport reaction from KR. But uh, KR is just, look at the supply difference now. Spanishwa is up by 40, roughly 50 supply almost. Uh, now he's up by, yeah, 50 supply. And he's going to make KR go ahead and retreat. KR just has no answer for this. I mean, Spanishwa is being very patient. He knows exactly what he wants to do with his units. And it was all possible because he got the gas, he got the expansions, and he got the drones out to make all this work. So it looks like this game is about ready to wrap up. As soon as KR decides to quit, he is losing a lot of, uh, Sunishwa is losing a lot of corruptors, but as soon as Sunishwa decides to throw all these Zerglings at him, this is going to be an easy game. And, uh, yeah, so hopefully you guys can see why the so-called Ice Fisher build works, as Sunishwa has so adoringly named it. Uh, hopefully you guys took notes from this video. You can always refer back to it if you have any questions or anything. Um, let me know if you guys have any comments about it. Or if there's anything that I missed, which I'm not sure that there is, but there's always minor things that I may miss here and there. Leave them in the comments down below. And uh, until next time, I will see you guys later. Stay tuned for more build order tutorials and whatnot, as well as any replays. We'll see you guys later.